In this video, we're going to show you how you can convert a messy MIDI file like this into a clean score that includes metadata, dynamic markings, and even tablature. For simplicity, we are working on a single track in this video. However, the techniques demonstrated here can be applied to much more complicated orchestrations where each track can have completely different settings. Before we export, let's take a quick look at the MIDI file we're about to convert using Notation Switchblade. With this particular track, we're using guitar, so we've staggered the notes to simulate a pick strumming across the strings. We're using key switch notes to switch between articulations, so C sharp 0 is harmonics, while C0 is picked. We also have a quintuplet on measure 3. This has been quantized within Pro Tools. You can also see at the bottom we have a variety of velocities for these notes. Let's go ahead and export this MIDI file, then we'll open it in a notation program and see how it looks before Notation Switchblade. This is the typical mess you see when opening a MIDI file in a notation program. The reason for this is that MIDI only stores timing information and not notation information. If you look at this first measure, you can see there's a 256 note rest and a mess of tied dotted notes. Those should be whole notes, but because we staggered the notes in our MIDI sequence, that's what they look like. You can also see key switch notes extending down all the way into the next staff. If you take a look at the third bar, this is a complete mess, which is supposed to be our quintuplet. The other thing that would be really nice to see here is dynamic markings as well as the key switch notes deleted from the score since they're not actual notes. Let's take a look at the interface for Notation Switchblade and we'll show you how we can solve the problems you just saw. The first screen is the Convert tab. This is where you load the MIDI file you wish to convert to Music XML and save it as Music XML. Your saved file will default to be the same name as the MIDI file, but with the .xml extension. It is, of course, possible to rename the file you're saving as well. Let's take a look at the quantize slider. This is a very important component of Notation Switchblade. What it does is actually reduce the resolution of the MIDI file to a more manageable resolution for notation purposes. Remember, we're only trying to make a score that's legible. We're not worried about playback accuracy at this point. So when we have it set to 2, like it is right now, it's actually going to force every single note to snap to 8th notes. If your MIDI file contains shorter notes than 8th notes, such as 16th notes, you would set it to 4. For 32nd notes, you would set it to 8, and so on and so forth. This does not affect tuplets. It's only for straight 8th notes, 16th notes, etc. Tuplets are handled in a unique way, as you'll see later on in this video. The Convert tab also includes a Draw Accidentals feature, which allows you to draw sharps or flats in front of each relevant note. The Patch Settings tab is where you define which MIDI data you want to convert to score symbols. This includes MIDI CC, Program Change, Key Velocity, or Key Switch notes. The Patch Settings tab has three levels of data on it, Patch Groups, patches, and criterion. A patch includes the tracks it affects, as well as the type of score symbol you want to appear on the score. In this example, we're using text to draw the words picked and harmonics. You can also choose other score symbols from the pop-up menu. Inside of a patch are the criterion that define when a patch will actually draw its score symbol on your score. This set of criterion is using the key switch note C0. When the note C0 occurs in your MIDI file, the text picked will be displayed above the next note. We've also unchecked the box for draw affected notes. This will automatically remove the key switch notes from the score. The harmonics patch is using C sharp 0 to draw the text harmonics above the next note. You can also use MIDI CC, velocity or program change with several available settings to control a patch and its associated score symbol. The Track Settings tab is where you organize the tracks in your MIDI file. In this case, we only have one track. You can rename the track by double-clicking on it. 
You can set the clef you would like to appear on the score and the line that you want the clef to appear on the staff. Let's take a look at the tuplet settings page. This is where we define how tuplets are deciphered from a MIDI file. It is important to note that you must use the proper parts per quarter setting based on the resolution of the MIDI file you're working with. In this case, we used Pro Tools, which exports MIDI at 9600 ppq. The most common resolution for exported MIDI files is 480 ppq. Logic, Cubase, and Digital Performer all export MIDI files at this resolution by default. To add settings for another tuplet, simply click on the New Tuplet button, then scroll down to the window that opens. You can select a number for the tuplet type, as well as the complete tuplet duration. This is the amount of space that the tuplet will fit into. A graphic will appear, showing how the tuplet will look on your score. Based on the parts per quarter setting, the beginning tick of each note in the tuplet will automatically be adjusted by notation switchblade. Changing the parts per quarter setting will automatically recalculate the beginning ticks. While usually not necessary, it is possible to adjust the beginning ticks for each note of the tuplet as well. The last screen in Notation Switchblade is the Beaming Settings tab. In most cases, you will not have to do anything with this screen, but if you want, you can customize the beaming for each time signature and have up to two distinct beaming patterns for each time signature. By default, the 2-2 two -two time signature has two groups of four eighth notes beamed. If we wanted to change that to beam four groups of two eighth notes, we'd simply change the number of the first beaming box to two and then each subsequent beaming box to two until we had four beaming boxes. The last thing we need to address with this MIDI file is dynamic markings. Since I've already created a patch group for velocity that triggers dynamic markings, I am going to simply import this from another configuration file and merge it into the one I'm working on. Clicking on the Import button brings up a file browser that will allow me to choose a configuration file to import data from. Once you locate the configuration file, you can open it and view the various data inside of it. In this case, we're scrolling through the patch groups and we will check the import checkbox next to the dynamics patch group. Once this data is imported, we can simply close this window and go back to working on our configuration. The patch group for dynamics contains several different markings. These can be customized to work on all tracks or only on specific tracks if you want. In the patch for mezzo piano, this particular score marking will appear if the velocity is between 56 and 70. The tolerance slider is used in this set of criterion to keep the patch from drawing unnecessary dynamic markings on the score. Even if the key velocity exceeds the upper limit of 70, there needs to be a difference of at least 9 for a new dynamic marking to appear. So now that we've converted our MIDI file into Music XML, we've opened it up with Sibelius. As you can see, the score is a lot easier to read. Remember, this is what it looked like before Notation Switchblade. If you take a look at all of our chords and notes, uh, by using the quantize slider, we were able to get rid of any of those unnecessary rests and weird tied notes that really were not easy to read. You can also see that the key switch notes are gone. They've been converted into text. We have nice dynamic markings showing up under the score. And if you take a look at our quintuplet, it's actually a quintuplet and not a mess of tied notes and rests. So as you can see, once you have your template set up with Notation Switchblade for your instruments, converting them into a playable score is much easier. Also keep in mind that while we worked with a single track in this example, these techniques can be applied to much more complicated scores. The Patch Settings and Track Settings tabs can be used to provide custom settings for each track. This allows a lot of flexibility in the instruments you use and lets you customize Notation Switchblade to work with instruments from your favorite sample libraries. Once your configuration file has been saved, you now have a template you can use over and over. This way you only have to make these settings once for the way you like to work. 
You will not need to change anything unless you add tracks to your MIDI file. In this case, you would need to add information for these tracks to the Track Settings tab, and if you're using patches, you would also need to add patch information to the Patch Settings tab. You can quickly import patch and track settings from other configuration files and merge them into your current configuration. This allows flexibility when combining templates. Now, because we're working with guitar, there's one last step we can do very easily in Sibelius, and that is to add tablature. So if we just go to the Create Instruments menu, and we'll select Acoustic Guitar Standard Tuning, Add to Score, click on OK, and then we just grab the tab, drag it down. At this point, all you need to do is select all the notes, copy them, and paste them onto the tablature. A free 30-day trial version of Notation Switchblade is available at www.audioimpressions.com.